now 50,000. Whoa, Leonardo, hold on, man. I mean, did you lose your mind one more time? Wow, I mean, seriously, Dow 50,000. You know, this channel is like mostly bears. You know, we're gonna like dislike this video hundreds and hundreds and hundred times over. Guys, before you do that, I, I just thought it was gonna be a catch title to actually bring your attention to what is about to happen. So down 50,000, okay, it's a bit of a stretch, but you know, last time y'all thought I lost my mind a couple of times, actually worked out for those of you that took action on the trades. So here it is, not 50,000. We think Dow can easily go to 30,000. But what's more important is the fact that S&P 500 can hit 3,300. Now, you're gonna think, okay, well, what's the big deal? 3,300 on S&P, okay. Guys, in the next 30 to 60 days, that's the big deal. And if you know exactly how to trade it, and you stand the reason behind it, this is a nice, smooth sailing this summer. You can go on a vacation and make money. Guys, this is that simple, so check this out. Cup with a hand. Do you guys like coffee? I mean, I like coffee. I like coffee in the morning. I like to, you know, drink coffee in the middle of the day. I even drink coffee at night. So focus on this, guys. For those of you not familiar with Chuck Perry, cup with a handle. Cup with a handle is probably one of the deadliest bullish patterns known to the markets that stood the test of time for years, dozens of years, hundreds of years. So cup with a handle, basically, picture you drinking coffee. Here it is and try to lay it over on a chart. It looks like this. It looks like a cup. Now, there's some clear pre-existing conditions. We're not going to spend a lot of time in that. Typically, a cup with a handle, a lot of times could be misinterpreted in a downtrend. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of charts right now, which is going to particularly point out why this is indeed the real deal cup with a handle. Because a lot of cup with a handles, actually, they fail to break out. So, when you look at the chart, sometimes it looks like this. It looks like a cup with a handle. So breakouts oftentimes fail, but not this time. So this video is devoted to help you understand why this breakout in the market's high is actually the real deal. So let's look at the charts. Let's not listen to the news. Let's just look at the charts. Let's see what the hell they tell us here. So S&P 500 weekly chart, what do we have? Well, there's a couple of ways to look at this. This particular way we draw the cup with a handle. Okay, yes, this is your cup. This is your handle. This is the potential breakout. Hi, then I know if you are a bear, you're thinking, Leonardo, I hate you, man. I, I hate you. I was expecting the market crash. You've been talking about the summer crash. You've been talking about, Leonardo, come to your senses. Let's buy some puts now. Guys, I don't want you to buy the puts. I'm going to explain in this video why you should not be buying puts. Should my, you should not be buying puts on anything. Maybe besides US dollar, because that thing could actually be going lower. Besides shorting the dollar, guys, there's a lot of reasons to be a bull. So just picture this cup and handle. Uh, picture yourself drinking coffee and enjoying the profits. And it's going to be nice and easy. Guys, the smooth sailing in the markets like this does not happen very often. So it's important to identify it and take advantage of it. For those of you day traders, you're going to hate it. I mean, you're going to hate it because... I'm going to tell you to not day trade this type of market environment. Because when you have these breakouts in a couple of handles, who get ready for this. They happen at times, 10% breakouts, 20% breakouts. In instances in certain stocks, 50% breakouts higher out of this cup with handle formation. Yeah, so don't let this little cup of coffee fool you. There, there's some substantial gains to be made here, guys. Here's another way to draw this cup with a handle on a larger time frame. Again, we're looking at the S&P weekly. Look at this. Man, it just don't get any better than this. And you probably wonder, well, Leonardo, what makes you think that this is the real deal? We're going to get to it in just a second. Be a little patient because you will need to be patient on being a bull in this market because it's going to look like things are about to crash. It's going to look like, oh my God, here's that sell-off. Leonardo was wrong. And it's going to look like you're just going to want to buy some puts. You know why? You know why you're going to want to buy some puts? 
Because you're a bear. You are a bear. That's why you subscribe to this channel. You're a bear. You're like a bear by definition, by your nature. No matter if things go up, you automatically think they need to come down. And when do they need to come down? Whenever you buy your puts, which is today, tomorrow. Guys, stop. There will be a time to buy puts. It is just not right this very moment. So here it is. Whew, S&P daily chart. What we got going on here? Whoa, this can't be real. Don't tell. Don't. No, don't even go there. This right here looks like a bird with wings. This is actually a reverse head and shoulders. Guys, for those of you, guys, if you don't know the cup with the handle, you don't know head and shoulder formation, reverse off the head and shoulder, which is highly powerful, bullish formation as well. You guys just got to click some links below. Go to tradingoptionslive.com. Take some other chart course to help you understand this stuff. But let's focus here for one second. So on one time frame on a weekly chart, we're getting a very bullish cup with a handle. On a daily chart, we're getting a head and shoulder reversal. Which if you watched our yesterday's video, we've talked about the five outcomes of the Federal Reserve meeting. One of them was the outcome I really didn't like. Because yes, indeed, I am a bear. But I'm okay with being a bull for some time if that's the strategy that makes the money. So here it is. I'm going to convert myself into a bull temporarily. And I strongly recommend that if you are a bear watching this, that you would do the same temporarily. Um, because that's what's going to double, triple, quadruple your trading account if you just stay the course and you really try to understand this so multiple time frames extremely bullish patterns on various time frames okay you're gonna say whoa, 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 whoa what about your comment Dow 50,000 you got me watching this stuff now now you're telling me this is not real guys if we look at the Dow it's just not as good of a predictor of what's coming next as the S&P because S&P is just a, it combines a lot more stocks, a lot more sectors, a lot more everything. So it's a little bit of a better barometer for overall market. But talking about the Dow, if you clicked on this button, so let me give you the breakdown. Dow, 30,000. No brainer. Actually, we're considering a 10% move higher out of these cup with a handle so as you notice the pattern is the same it's the cup with a handle on the weekly chart on the Dow okay if we go to uh, the daily chart surprise surprise we're getting the reverse head and shoulders on the Dow pointing to break out to 30,000 guys I, I know 10 percent of like you know 26 7 is like 2700 points but let's just round it up let's just round it up to 30,000 make it nice and easy for everybody so green 30 thousand that's where we're going guys that's where we're going in the next 60 days i know it sounds stupid it sounds ridiculous especially if you're a bear but just stay with this look at this this is the most important slide in this video so if you're trying to watch this guys zoom in on this one what is this well, a few times, especially if you subscribe to our 13 market moves daily analysis. It's kind of like the breakdown, the formula we use daily to estimate what the market is going to do next, basically predicting the next market move. Okay, here's what we're seeing. We're comparing the current market environment to the environment of December 2017 and January 2018. Nice and simple. Two months. Now, what is particular about these months? Well, there was a huge catalyst going on, particularly Trump announcing the idea of these tax cuts. So the markets went wild. And specifically, how wild did, did this thing get? Well, we went from 2,600 on S&P, went to almost 2,900. Roughly move about 9%, just rounded off, roughly 9% move. Okay, now here's the interesting part about making the comparisons in the analysis and the analogy of these 60-day move, 10% move. We are, look at this, guys, really zoom in, zoom in right here. I need to take a closer look. What the heck is this? What This is the reverse head and shoulder in November of 2017, which was preceding this 10% move higher. 
Okay, well, for those that are new, you may be thinking, okay, why is this even important? Well, let me see if I can do this. Let me, let me see. Dude, let me see this here. Okay, I got it. What is this? This is a gap up higher. A gap up higher? We, we, a gap up higher like we had today? Like, so what you're really saying is that this would be identical in 2017 of November to what is actually taking place today on June 20th. Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. And if I'm correct on this, this market is about to go nuts. It's about to go crazy. Like 10% higher crazy. Maybe if we study the history, some of these couple to handle breakouts, guys, some of these couple to handles, they break out 20, 30, 50% higher, as I mentioned earlier. Man, look at the steady pace of this 60-day move. And actually, it didn't even last 60 days, right? Because it followed by the sharp drop-off in the early, actually, just last few days of January 2018. So this is, guys, if you are a trader, oh my God. If you're new trading, wow. You, you, got, you don't understand. This is a round-trip trade. This is how a million dollars could be made in your trading account with you just starting out with like 20, 30K. Guys, this is absolutely freaking insane because you time this right and you time the reversal, the TRO, trade reversal opportunity. We talk a lot about that. Now with charge divergence, of course, what the heck is a trade reversal opportunity? So if you get this and you get this, you're looking at 1,000, 2,000% returns. Guys, and this ain't no rocket science. You can do it. So if you're trying to get better understanding how to actually do this, how to just click the links below to go to tradingoptionslive.com, get more info. Don't hesitate. Do it today. Do it now. Take action so you wouldn't miss out on one of the best trading opportunities that the market has ever presented us with. So 30 to 60 days action. Absolutely stupid. Absolutely insane. A repetition of what has taken place in 2017, 2018. Pay attention to this reverse head and shoulders. Pay attention to this gap up higher. It is identical to what is actually taking place today on June 20th. So the next move in the market is this. The question is, are you going to fight the market? Hey, I, I, I had some people that were fighting the market. I posted the video. On December 26, 2018, saying that the market was going to go high for six months. And we had some people that watched the video, and they were fighting it. They were like, no, man, they're talking in the news. It's going to crash. It's going to, man, market is going to hell. We're going 50% low. Guys, I understand. I understand. They got to make some content. They got to, you know, they got to keep you entertained on CNBC. But the reality is this. A lot of the things that the markets are doing, like historical, if you just look at similarities, if you just identify them, if you just pay attention close on the chart to what's coming next, when similar conditions are met, guys, you can enjoy the coffee in the morning. You don't have to stress. You can just get in your position and relax and make the kind of money that you have not seen in your trading account Probably since you've started trading, guys. So this is an awesome opportunity. That's all I'm trying to say. This is one of the greatest ever opportunities. History was made today. We actually hit all-time highs in the market in the history of the United States. Freaking exciting. Guys, this is, damn it, this is awesome. So here's the deal. This is what happens next. We got 30 to 60 days higher. Clearly not without any down days because if you look at this analogy in 2017, we did have some red days so just don't watch this video say oh well leonardo told me things are just gonna go to the moon they're all gonna, gonna be green every day no 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 but one important thing to understand is when other things do come down you have super and it's not even the plunge protection For, freaking forget about the plunge protection that's just a, I, I i don't even like that phrase it's institutional investors buying the dips so when you're seeing this 
red days, they're coming in and they're buying the dips. Why? Because it makes sense. Because back then, it was the tax cut that was driving the market high. So how do we compare this to now? Well, we just got the promise from the Fed that they're okay cutting down the rates. If it comes down to it, they're ready to take action. So it's just as good as what you've seen on this chart right here in 2017, 2018. The tax cut, the rate cut. I mean, they even sound the same. But in terms of institutional investors making a decision, do they buy this market or do they sell this market? The clear answer is they are buying this market and they are going to continue buying this market because in their book, it fits the characteristics of all the reasons why they should buy this market. So we shouldn't be fighting this market. We shouldn't be a bear. We should keep a transition into a bull. So with that said, this is what we're expecting. Let me zoom back in here. We're expecting a continuation move. It's going to look something like this. Remember, it's not going to be without any pullbacks. There's going to be some pullbacks, but pullbacks are going to be bought. Basically, what I'm saying is buying the damn dip is back in style. And that's the only game in town. If you just focus and zoom in on this, guys, your success will be inevitable in this market. And what makes it so cool is when all the banks are buying, even if they're buying for the wrong reasons. Okay, we're traders. Our goal is to follow the institutional money. If we get that right, we make money. It's as simple as that. If you don't understand how to make sense of this institutional buying, guys, got tons of, got 20 hours of course information that you can just sign up, learn, so you can be a better trader. Just click the links below. But banks likely to buy every pullback in this market. Now here's a simple question for you. What the heck is this? What is this? What does this look like? Guys, it's not a rocking side. Guys, it's a move seven. You got me think, what the hell is a move seven? Guys, it's when banks buy the damn dip. It's that simple. So the market gaps up higher after the Federal Reserve announcement. Now, honestly, it caught me a bit off guard because generally speaking, when the announcement comes out, we tend to have a huge move. Well, we had a rather muted reaction to the announcement. The big move came actually at 8 p.m. after the market hours, when the markets actually opened trading in Asia. That's where the big move in S&P futures actually took place. Therefore, the gap up higher. And here's the crazy part. Guys, pay attention because this is important. The market hit all-time high at 29.6450. Started selling up. So a lot of people said, whoa, 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 whoa. It's another one of those. So you might have followed some people out there somewhere. I mean, there's different ways to look at charts and interpret them, but there's only one way that is actually right. So you might have heard people say, well, it's a double top, it's a triple top, it's a quadruple top, it's, oh, it's about to crash. Guys, this market ain't going to crash. It's not going to crash. I am the Mr. Market Crash guy. As a matter of fact, we used to call this channel Market Crash. So I know all about market crash, and this is not the circumstance for the market to crash. So don't be buying a ton of puts. This market is not going to crash in the next 30 to 60 days. So here's the deal. When this market started selling off, what happened? Guys, look at the number. Damn it. This, is, this, this stuff is so, like, if you look at these levels, this is absolutely amazing. 29.35.75 rounded up to 29.36. This is exact same level where the market has hit Tuesday on the way higher and it was the resistance. It was the same level that market hit after the Federal Reserve announcement yesterday on Wednesday, June 19th. And it has failed to break above that during the regular trading session. But after the trading session, when the markets opened in Asia, we had a substantial breakout higher in the futures, not just in the S&P futures, but in the gold futures as well. And we're going to get to that in just a sec. The point is, today when the market sold off, it hit the exact number 
and it moved in a reverse high. So now this level of 29.35.36 is actually the support level for the markets. And from here, we get the breakout. And if you study the last three times when the markets actually visited all-time highs, this was not the case. The market continued to sell off. So what we're noticing is a shift in the behavior when the market visits all-time highs this day. Now, here's the second question for you. What do you think this is? What the heck is this? Guys, it is the price of Adobe shares where typically they would be sold off like crazy. 20, 30 point drop instantly. Yeah, we do get the drop after the earnings announcement a couple days ago. Guess what happens next? They buy the dip on poor forward projections as far as the sales numbers, as far as earnings. Adobe basically comes out and says, hey, we're slashing our forward-looking projections for the next quarter. We don't think we're going to grow as fast as we have been growing, which is like a death sentence for a growth stock. And yet, institutions, what are they doing? They're buying the damn dip. So when institutions are buying the damn dip on news that are apparently stupid, that typically they would actually get rid of the stock in a heartbeat. But in this case, they're buying. That tells you the market is stupid. And when the market is stupid, it doesn't matter how many puts you buy. It just don't work. So what's next? We're going to talk about what actually makes this breakout the realest breakout ever. So check this out. If we lay VIX over the chart, you can pick your chart, whatever you guys trade. You can put it over Russell. You can put it over S&P. You can put it over Dow. It don't matter. The findings will be almost identical. So going back to December 2017 and January 2010, look where the VIX was when we were hitting these all-time highs for the very first time ever. The VIX was at 10. The second time we're hitting all-time highs was in September of 2018. Look where was the VIX. <laughs> it was about 15. The third time we're hitting all-time highs was March and April of 2019. The VIX is above 16. Today we're hitting all-time highs where is the VIX? It's creating a downtrend move. There was a point pre-market where VIX was actually hitting the level of 13, which would be lower than the prior two points when we visited all-time highs. Would be lower than September, would be lower than recent all-time highs in March and April. Combine that with the hook. I know, guys, I'm giving you a lot of free stuff here to help you guys get better because... Ideally, I want everybody that's watching this channel to get better, to catch some good trades. Here's the deal, guys. The hook that we're referring to here is essentially the pre-existing condition for a death cross. Death cross, meaning blue line or the 50-day line will intersect the orange line on the way down. It is not apparent yet. But that is exactly where we're actually heading. So what we're seeing here on the chart is VIX is likely to move from this level today of 1314.7 to a level of 10 in the next 60 days. And if that is the case, that is how you get to 32, 3300 on S&P 500. That's how you get to Dow 30,000. Hey, there was a guy who wrote a book back in like 99 or 2000. He said, Dow 30,000. Well, finally, this dude's going to have a birthday because Dow is going to hit 30,000. I mean, he was off about 19 years. But, hey, it was a good idea. And it's finally materializing. Unfortunately for that guy, I forgot his name, but uh, he's been writing, you know, Dow 10,000 for the last 10 years. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think this is funny as hell. The guy went from a the most bullish guy out there, Dow 30,000, to being a total bear. Oh, Dow's going to drop 50%. He's been writing these bearish books for the last five, ten years. So, um, you know, market will test you. But if he would have just stayed with his deal of Dow 30,000, he would have finally had a victory. And guys, maybe that's how you feel today. Maybe you've had a few trades that just didn't work out. I mean, guys, I have days when my trades don't work. It's okay. It's just a part of being in the business of trading. You know what? It's anything in life is like this. You know, there's just you can't expect to show up for work and have a good day every damn day. It sometimes you're gonna have bad days, sometimes you're gonna have good days. That's just a part of the business. But the most important thing when you do have bad days is to laser focus and maintain your clarity of mind as far as what is actually the next move in the market. And if you don't know how to calculate the next move in the market, clearly invite you to click the links below and get more info. There's some free training somewhere down there below this video. So take advantage of it, guys. Get more information. More information and understanding the information will help you become a better trader. So why is this breakout real? Because we're seeing a divergency on the VIX in relation to where the market visited the previous highs in relation to where the VIX is today. And that tells us that this move is real and we are about to visit Dow 30,000. Okay, you may think, okay, that's good. All these boring stuff charts and divergences and what the hell. Tell me this, Leonardo. You said yesterday in your video that gold was going to temporarily drop. And when I checked on the futures, damn it, gold was up like crazy. So why is gold moving higher? Guys, we have mentioned in yesterday's video specifically that was just a short-term play. We actually expected gold to initially, after the Federal Reserve announcement, to move lower, after which we specifically said if gold hits a level of 1320 or so, we would be a buyer of gold because we specifically pointed out that gold is heading to 1500 1700 even $2,000 in the next 24 to 36 months. So what's going on here? Well, gold actually did something that it has not done in five years. So our analogy and probability was based on the fact that gold has not been actually able to break out of that 1350, 1360 level for five years in a row. So when you look at it from that standpoint, it's actually a low probability trade that gold was automatically going to slice through that level and move higher. But we did say in yesterday's video that if gold does move above 1350, 1360 level on strong volume, that we would be a buyer of gold futures, the options on gold futures, ticker forward slash GC, if you got a TD Ameritrade account. Okay, so what is this? Hold on, is this gold? Man, shit don't look like gold. Are you kidding me? Look at these moves. 1,300, 1,400. This looks more like Bitcoin or something. Look at this volatility. We can't be talking about gold. Oh, hold on. Maybe this is BYND chart right here. Look at these crazy moves going to the moon. Guys, this is indeed the chart of gold. And that's the crazy move. Look at this 8 p.m. action when it was hitting 1397. This was when the markets opened in Asia, particularly in Japan. That's when we got the big breakout in gold. So what do we make out of this? Guys, it's very simple. Let's take a look where gold has traveled in the last 10, 11 years. What you will discover is in 2011, 12, 13, if you have not been trading the market, gold was sitting high at 17, 18, 1900. Those represented by three orange dots right here. Since then, it's been trading in a tight range between roughly 1100 and 1300 bucks. What is this? Well, this is the same thing I've shown you on the chart of Dow Jones and, you know, the S&P 500, which is, you guys should know this by now, it's the reverse head and shoulder. The reverse head and shoulder is actually a highly bullish pattern, which kind of tells you that the breakout is higher. Yes, that we're taking the other side of the equation because, as you clearly see in the last five years, gold has been unable to clear this level, but it finally does it. At 8 p.m., when Japanese markets open for trading. Surprise, surprise. 
Okay, so we sliced right through that level. And if we take a look at the uh, daily chart for the last, uh, since 2013 till now, clearly if you were to draw a line, this is a nice strong uptrend. You're making a series of higher lows, which is quite bullish. So our ideal entry we discussed in the video yesterday was the entry right here when we break out of this range, out of these uh, 1350, 1350, 1370 level. So your entry level is right here because when you break out of some major pattern like this, this huge consolidation between 11 and 1300 bucks, these moves higher, guys, that could be rather crazy and rather quick. So just own, just own gold futures options options on gold futures that is and just stay happy with them for the next couple of months and i guess the most confusing question that i've been receiving from traders today has been okay well is gold hold on the gold is moving higher it's because they're thinking that the market is going to crash guys Gold moves higher when interest rates come down. When interest rates come down, it's a great environment for gold prices to rocket higher. And it's actually a great environment for dollar to depreciate in value. Okay, that is just the historic data. Just take it the way it is. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's just easier to just like understand what happens when something happens. So... After fall, what happens? Well, after autumn or fall, you get winter. After winter, what do you get? You get spring. After spring, you get summer. Like, if you spend hours during, trying to figure this shit out, why, you know, winter follows fall or why spring follows winter, it, it would just be a, a bad investment of your time. So, just understand this. Okay, don't spend hours on this. Just understand this. Lower interest rates equals higher gold prices just keep it nice and simple and enjoy the coffee the cup with a handle because this is actually another way to look at this the cup with a handle on a longer time frame now here's the entry we've talked about this and this is the breakout point so this is where you want to get in and depending on how aggressive a trader you are you can calculate a rather Fierce breakout higher within a short amount of time. Or you can just, you know, enjoy that cup of coffee and just sit in this trade for three to six months to a year. I mean, they certainly sell um, gold options on, on gold futures that, you know, go out as far as a year, a couple of years out. So this could be just a nice and easy trade to take advantage of. Pretty soon they'll be talking like, oh, shit, gold is more volatile than Bitcoin. That would be a headline we could be seeing in the next 12 months that would be funny and for those of you who'd be like hell with gold i don't want to trade gold this is just stupid just give me another trade leonardo just do it just give me some give me some i can just put together tomorrow and make some good money guys amazon 2280 i told you man i was going to start this video with some crazy numbers that was out there dow 50,000. now you didn't know at the end of this video it's going to come back and hit you with amazon 2280 did you but here it is by end of july amazon 2280. leonardo do you just pull these numbers out of your ass tell us the truth i mean how do you really do it I mean, seriously. I mean, we've seen you do some videos, 4K to 63K, 3K to 59K, whatever. But, like, how much of this do you actually, I mean, how do you do this? Just tell us the real deal. Guys, certain environments are highly beneficial for day trade. Certain environments are highly beneficial for swing trade. In this particular case, in this type of market environment, guys, just enjoy your cup of coffee. Remember, the cup with the handle will do the job for you. Just sit back and relax, buy some calls, and enjoy the view. Enjoy the coffee, okay? So by the end of July, why? Here's the chart. What do you see? By now, guys, come on, you should know this. It's a cup with a handle fixing to break out. What's meaningful, however, is Amazon is slightly behind S&P 500. While S&P 500 is actually hitting all-time highs, this one is about 140 bucks under its all-time high. So all-time highs for Amazon is about 2,052 bucks. So we've nailed the top. We shirted the hell out of it. And now we're interested in actually buying some calls. 
which were buying the hell out of these calls today, and we intend to keep them for about two, three, four weeks. And the reason we want to time this trade now, because number one, we think Amazon is going to catch up to the S&P, so we're pretty much almost guaranteed a move to 2000, 2050 level. From there, we're also expecting another 10%, 9 to 10% breakout higher. Clearly, the math is simple. It's about 200 bucks. So it's about a $200, $300 move higher. And the question is, why now? Well, the answer is quite simple. If you study the history of Amazon, it typically does this major appreciation move between June 20th and July 15th. The main reason for that is because Amazon typically has a one or two day mega sale online, which would be an equivalent to the Black Friday that a lot of other retailers are participating. So Black Friday for Amazon is actually in July. Now the time frame or the actual date for the event varies anywhere from like July 5th all the way through July 15th. So we will find out exactly when it is this year, but let's say it falls on July 10th. In the expectation of this event, institutions are actually going to be accumulating shares of Amazon. So you could easily expect Amazon moving higher in certain days like 9, 10 bucks and certain days 30, 40 bucks. So we put this together, we put the cup and the handle analysis together, we put the reverse head and shoulders together. The ultimate question we should be asking ourselves is not whether Amazon is going to hit 2000 or 2050. The ultimate question we should be asking, what if? The cup with a handle at Amazon will produce a breakout greater than 9 to 10 percent that we're calculating for the rest of the market. What if the breakout in Amazon could produce a 20 percent breakout, which could still be conservative? 20 percent breakout in Amazon would equate to 400 bucks. So could we see Amazon at 2400? We will find out in the next 30 days. It would be actually sort of conservative. So curious to find out. I'll be drinking my cup with a handle and uh, enjoying Amazon hitting 2,000, 2,100, 2,200. Hey, if you care to join in, it's a nice and easy smooth sailing kind of trade. So we take a look at Amazon. Daily chart, reverse hand and shoulders, surprise, surprise, just like S&P 500, but slightly lagging. So what's the action? 2000 strike Amazon calls two to three week expiration. Let's do this, guys. Nice and smooth, easy trade. Just pull the trigger, take action. You know, a lot of comments I get on YouTube here is, you know, some guys they're like, oh man, oh, oh I should have done this trade. Oh, I, you know, oh man, I, I, I didn't pull the trigger. Guys, you know, what makes the difference between guys that make money and between the guys that don't is action. Just like everything else in life. So don't wait for bad things to happen to you. Take action and make things happen for yourself. Visit tradingoptionslive.com. Click the links below this video so you can make this year your best trading year ever. I'll catch you guys on the next trade.